Hey everybody, what's up? Down here at Lay Lake, second day of practice for the Bassmaster Open. Just taking a short little snack break here and wanted to do a quick video pertinent to some stuff that's going on here in, uh, here at Lay Lake. And it just got me thinking about it from what I've seen here in practice about um, one of the things that I, I see unfolding in the sport of fishing more and more. And that's how fishing pressure has a bigger impact on the bass in a negative way than a cold front does and here at lay lake this place is getting just hammered it's just like it's unbelievable it's like the, the and it, not only the places get it's getting hammered but the good places are getting hammered it's like several of the places i've got a few bites on here it's just like they're not real obvious they're pretty inobvious stuff but it's like the next thing you know you see boats sitting right down on top of it and this goes on all over the lake. It doesn't matter where you're fishing. It's like there's no secrets anymore. It's like everybody is so connected with information and and uh, just knowledge of the bodies of water that we fish. It's just like, it just amazes me how many people wind up on the same spots, the best water on the lake. And the thing you have here on a, lay, a lake like Lay Lake, or where we just got back from Louisville Lake, you've got these small lakes that have a tremendous amount of fishing pressure on them in these big tournaments. And these bass, they react to that. And, you know, I, that's one of the things I wish that we would have in tournaments is I wish we'd have, uh, we, I wish we'd go to lakes that are appropriate for the size of field that we have to, that will allow everybody to spread out and have a little bit of room to themselves, a little bit of, little bit of space. Because these lakes like we go to, like uh, Arkansas River, Louisville Lake, Lay Lake, it's like everybody winds up on top of everybody and it neutralizes the field to a large degree and it, and it throws a wrench into the game plans of everybody that, uh, that just can't be denied. <clears throat> So what you have here is that I, th I think one of the things that's important to remember about bass is like, you know, bass are products of their environment and they evolve. They've been around for millions of years and they didn't, they, they didn't survive being stupid. So what you have is bass are very aware of their environment. It's like when you have an increase on trolling motor noises, electronic pings, outboard motor noises when you hear this increase in volume which they can hear i mean you can you know how loud something is underneath the water you know they've evolved in my opinion to sort of get into a negative feeding mode the same way as you would have if you had a bad cold front go through um, you know how if you have a you know it's you've had a warming trend for several days and you get one of those really bad cold fronts where the temperature drops 30 degrees and it's bluebird skies and you got a, a strong north wind and how that that turns the fish off fishing pressure does the same thing that it, it just it absolutely does because those bass react to it the same the same way and if you've ever noticed if you ever go fishing like during the week uh, when there's not a lot of boats on the water and there's no tournaments you can you can see a noticeable difference in the, the personality of the bass and the mood of the bass, the way they bite, how aggressive they are. So you have a lake like Lay Lake here that's just getting absolutely hammered. We've got a cold front on top of tremendous fishing pressure and you know, it throws a, it throws a wrench and everything. But the, so the question remains is how do you, you know, instead of sitting here griping about that, which I, you know, I'll, I'd like to sit here and gripe about that for a long time because you know it's something that's I, it's irritating to me because i'm one of those guys that i love to fish where nobody's fishing that's why i like to fish that's why lake mead's my favorite lake in the country is because you can get out there and you can get away and you never see another boat all day long that's my ideal scenario in bass fishing i don't want to see another boat i don't want to hear a car i don't want to hear a boat i don't want to hear a plane i want complete peace tranquility and silence that's i wish in a perfect world that would be my bass fishing scenario but we don't live in that we live we live in a world where uh, bass fishing is so popular now and our lakes are so you know heavily used that you have to deal with that fishing pressure all the time so i want to give you all a few tips on sort of how to deal with that a little bit first of all um you can't take yourself away from the fish. It's just like the, there's a, there's sort of like a uh, a cliche in bass fishing that it's like okay you know 
I, you got to do something a little bit different than everybody else and you got to you know key on some different areas and that type of stuff the biggest mistake you can make is, is take your, is taking yourself away from the best areas and the best techniques within those areas trying to figure out something that nobody else is doing more importantly what you need to pay attention to is your your pace and your speed and your mechanics if you're i don't care what you're fishing if you're fishing points docks brush, you know, whatever, you know, riprap, whatever the thing is, it's really important in a heavy fishing pressure situation that you don't slop through those areas. You have to be stealthy and you have to approach those areas and you have to fish them slow and methodically and specifically from different angles. That's a, that's a big key um, when you're dealing with heavy fishing pressures is, get, is keying in that right angle. And that's why it's so important, like in these tournaments, that we have co-anglers that allow us to do that. Because a lot of times, say if I'm fishing, you know, a dock, for example, like that, I may have to make 50 or 60 casts on a particular dock to get that fish to bite. And if you make a pitch in by a pier or something like that, and then two casts later, here comes your co-angler's bait right next to you, that neutralizes you even further. So, which, which I don't want to get into really that topic in this particular thing, but more importantly, like I said, heavy fishing pressure, you have to be stealthy, you have to be accurate, your mechanics have to be right on. Um, you have to really get into that rhythm and that flow. And you have to tell yourself that um, if you have a lot of people in an area fishing, mentally, it's important for you to, to not only mentally tell yourself this but also do it you have to understand that area better than anybody else it's just like if you have an area that you're getting a few bites in you you really need to understand that area and spend the time in there and learn all the subtleties within that area better than anyone else because here like on lay lake there's a bunch of boats and you know the really good areas i see a lot of these guys coming in and out they're running up and down the lake pulling in on these places and you know they they may fish it for 30 minutes or an hour and leave it whereas the anglers that get into those heavily fished areas and they stay there and they commit to that particular area and they learn they find out where there's you know the subtle cover underwater that a lot of people can't see they understand the bite windows at, at different times of the day they understand how the wind and the sun and the light penetration is affecting the, maybe the color choices that the bass want. They understand those small, subtle details, and that's what's gonna separate you from that pack. Because sometimes it's just as important, um, say for example, it, right off in the bat in the morning, you know, you may find out they want a, a, a black back chartreuse side crankbait, and by 11 o'clock in the morning, a little bit more sunlight penetration, the wind's picked up a little bit more, and they want maybe a shad pattern. And you can only you can only really figure that out by spending a lot of time in an area and breaking it down and sort of seeing the mood and the and the uh, the the, uh, the personality of the fish more than anything else. But there's two different things, you know. If you're just out fishing for fun, wanting to catch a lot of fish, versus if you're in a tournament, wanting to do well in the tournament, there's two different type of approaches that you have to that. If you're fishing a heavily fished area in a tournament, practicing for it, number one is you don't need to be sticking fish. And number two, you don't even need to be showing your fish the bait. Because in my opinion, if you shake a fish off, it's almost like sticking that fish. It educates that fish to the bait. So what you have to do in these heavily fished areas in a tournament is you sort of have to, to mentally pre-fish an area. You have to you need to spend more time studying the bank, making fewer casts, and picking apart the stuff that you see as high percentage areas. Fish those areas in the tournament. You don't need, if you, if, if you go down a stretch of boat docks and you get bit on the first two docks and there's 10 more in front of you, there's no need to fish those 10 docks. Figure, find out if they're gonna bite in the tournament because every time you go to a dock and shake a fish off, there's the odds are that much less against it. Um, if you and if you're fishing for fun, it's a lot different situation because uh, you know you're not really you're not concerned about that at all, and, and it gets back more into just the paying attention to the subtle details, casting angles, presentation, the, the pace you're working your trolling motor at, all that type of stuff. So overall, what I want to the gist of what I'm talking about uh, is the fact that yes, fishing pressure, in my opinion, has a bigger impact 
on the bass than the cold fronts do. Um, they react very similar, but in my opinion, fishing pressure has a bigger impact than a cold front. And in order to, to succeed in both of those situations, a, a post cold front situation and a heavy fishing pressure situation, you have to be aware of the subtle details in your fishing better than anybody else around you. And once you do that, um, once you become aware of those things, that, that's the thing that gives you a little bit of an edge over everybody else and you can catch a few more fish. So anyway, going to get back to practicing here. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody, tuning in to the video, everybody. Appreciate it. You know, subscribe if you haven't. You know, really appreciate that too. And we'll be back soon. See you.